Endotracheal intubation is an advanced airway procedure which is used with an arrested patient to ensure a patent airway by inserting a tube directly into the trachea. This should only be attempted when CPR has been established and enough personnel are available. All patients should be hyperventilated with 100% oxygen prior to intubation attempts. Anytime an intubation attempt lasts longer than 30 seconds, the procedure must be stopped and the patient rehyperventilated for approximately one to three minutes before intubation is reattempted. The steps are as follows. One, observe appropriate body substance isolation procedures. Two, assemble the equipment to include a laryngoscope, assorted blades, assorted sizes of ET tubes, a stylet, which is optional, a 10cc syringe, and a stethoscope. Three, select the appropriate size laryngoscope blade. Attach the blade to the handle and check for a steady bright white light from the bulb when the blade is locked in position. Four, select a proper size ET tube. Five, inflate the cuff and check for leaks. Six, optional, insert a malleable stylet into the tube, leaving one to two centimeters of space at the distal end of the tube. Bend the stylet end over the proximal end of the tube. Seven, position the patient supine with the head in the sniffing position, slightly flexed if no spinal injury is suspected. The rescuer should be at the top of the head of the patient. If injury is suspected, keep head and neck in a neutral position with the aid of a second rescuer. Eight, hold the assembled laryngoscope in your left hand and insert it into the right side of the patient's mouth. Sweep the blade to the midline, moving the tongue to the left. Nine, straight blade, advance the blade until the tip lifts the epiglottis to expose the vocal cords. Ten, curved blade, advance the blade tip into the vallecula just above the epiglottis and lift, exposing the vocal cords. Eleven, lift the laryngoscope at approximately a 45-degree angle upward and toward the patient's feet. Avoid contacting the teeth, lips, or gums with the laryngoscope. Twelve, if no identifiable structures are seen, slowly withdraw the blade. If slight withdrawal of the blade fails to produce a view of identifiable structures, try to elevate the patient's head slightly if no spine injury is suspected. If this also fails, have an assistant place slight downward pressure on the patient's cricoid cartilage, the Selleck maneuver. 13. Hold the tube with your right hand and insert from the right corner of the mouth so the line of sight is not blocked. 14. Pass the tip of the tube between the vocal cords. Advance the tube until the proximal end of the cuff is just beyond the vocal cords. 15. Hold the tube securely in place and withdraw the laryngoscope from the mouth. Return the blade alongside the handle turning off the light and remove the stylet if used. 16. Inflate the cuff with 6 to 10 cc's of air or until resistance is felt or the air escape from the lower airway stops. Remove the syringe from the pilot valve. 17. Ventilate through the ET tube with 100% oxygen and auscultate bilaterally over lung fields and epigastrium. If lung sounds are absent or sounds are heard only in the stomach, deflate the cuff, remove the ET tube, and hyperventilate the patient before reattempting intubation. If sounds are softer or absent in the left lung, deflate the cuff, withdraw the tube approximately 1 to 2 centimeters, reinflate the cuff, and reassess breath sounds. 18. Continue to ventilate with 100% oxygen at appropriate rate. 19. Note the centimeter marking at the level of the teeth. 20. Secure the tube in place with tape or other device. Endotracheal extubation. 1. Observe appropriate body substance isolation procedures. 2. Have the suction unit turned on and ready. 3. If no suspected spinal injury, turn the patient's head to the side. Four, deflate the cuff on the endotracheal tube and remove.